Hello, this is Travis Elliott with National Control Devices, and today I'm going to be walking you through doing some diagnostic analysis of the DigiMesh modules that we offer in our enterprise line of wireless products. Um, the wireless module uh, available in those in those products is a, it's called a DigiMesh module, and DigiMesh is a wireless protocol created by Digi International. Uh, the modules are available in 900 MHz, 868, or 2.4 GHz variants on our website. Um, so this is applicable to all those products. So this is going to be applicable to any of our IoT long-range wireless devices. And the main goal of this video is to get you started with Digi's uh, XCTU software tool. This uh, XCTU is a very powerful uh, software diagnostic tool for changing settings in wireless modules, for analyzing uh, the environment that the modules are installed in. So, you know, if you go on site to a large installation uh, where you have several modules spread out across a, a large area and you've got repeaters and it's really complicated, this is the tool that you need to really dive into exactly what's going on. Uh, NCD doesn't offer uh, a software tool like this because Digi already provides it. Um, so to get the tool, you need to go to digi.com and then you're gonna just click on search on their website and then you're gonna put in x-ctu. And that's going to bring up the XCTU download and install configuration platform. So this is where you can download it. Um, they also have a lot of information on their website uh, about using XCTU. Um, there's a lot of information about the DigiMesh protocol. Um, so if you search DigiMesh on their, on their site, you're going to see a lot of resources about how it works. And keep in mind, National Control Devices did not create the DigiMesh protocol. We, did not, we do not manufacture the modules. We simply um, use the DigiMesh modules in our products. So uh, definitely a lot more resources available from Digi than we could ever provide. Um, but this is just kind of a, a helpful video on getting started. So once you've got XCTU installed, one thing you're going to need to keep in mind is you have to have a USB modem. You can't use an Ethernet modem. You can't use uh, the RS-45. You need a uh, USB modem. Um, so if you go to our website and just search for USB modem, um, you'll find them available there if you don't have one currently. That is something I absolutely recommend to anyone who's going to be doing large-scale installations. You need that USB modem. Okay, so I have my USB modem connected to my computer and I already have the XCTU software installed. So I'm going to open XCTU up and this is going to be the window you see to start with. Maybe a little bit different if you're on a Windows computer, but it's pretty well the same software. Uh, so I'm going to click on plus up here, the module plus, and that's going to allow it, me to connect to my USB modem. And this is how my USB modem is mounted on my system. If you're on Windows, you're going to see a COM port here. So just select the serial or COM port connection to your USB modem. Make sure the baud rate is set to 115.200 and then click on Finish. Now we've got the, uh, the module listed here on the left. And this is uh, our list of radio modules. So right now I just told it how to connect to my USB module, but we can actually discover wireless devices in the area and add them over here to this list. And we'll look at that here in a minute. But first, uh, now that I've got the module over here, I'm just going to click on it. And since I have the gear icon up here selected, it's going to show me all the settings in that wireless module. And we're going to take a look through the ones that are, are really applicable here. So the first thing we want to note is going to be a preamble ID and network ID. These two parameters are a good way of distinguishing um, unique networks in an area. So if you have a very large installation um, where you're going to have multiple IoT edge computers or multiple gateways or multiple modems, uh, sometimes it's a good idea to separate those devices into groups. You know, you're going to say, you know, I've got this IoT Edge computer, you know, I'm building A, 
I'm going to set all the sensors in building A to communicate with that. And then maybe I have an IoT Edge computer in building B with a bunch of sensors in there. I can isolate building A and building B and the modules inside them into their own unique networks using uh, the preamble ID or the network ID. I would say that the preamble ID is going to be the ideal way to separate these. Um, and another tip in XETU is you can click on this little icon here to get more information about what any setting is. Um, so, you know, I might set the preamble ID for building A, set all those devices to zero, and then building B, I might set the preamble ID to one. That way, those devices will not cross talk. I've got two completely isolated sets of devices. They're still currently on the same frequency band, but they're at least isolated in the network so that I won't see cross traffic. Another thing that you can do is to use the channel mask parameter to basically lock these devices into different frequency channels. And what that means is you could say, okay, building A, I want you to operate between 902 and 910 megahertz. Building B, I want you to operate from 911 to 920 megahertz you know, you're actually isolating their frequency band. And that can be really good, uh, a, a good way to isolate devices as well. Another th area where um, channel mask comes in useful is if you've got a lot of noise in an installation on a particular channel, you can just make sure that your devices aren't attempting to use that particular uh, channel frequency. Um, and channel mask is something that, you know, I would recommend, you know, if you get into this, you really need to dig into Digi's documentation and really study uh, how this works. But that's essentially what you're doing is limiting the frequency range of the devices, which by default is pretty large. It's something like 902 to 928 is the frequency band that the devices will bounce around in. Um, the next thing is uh, TX power level. For the most part, you're probably never going to want to change this. Um, there's a lot of different settings in here and there's a lot of things that we simply don't use uh, in our products. Um, so you can kind of look through here at these different things. Um, you know, there's things if you don't know what it is, please don't change it. Um, encryption is our devices ship out uh, with encryption enabled with a default encryption key. Um, so if you go changing this, you know, you really need to document what you did um, because it's possible you could kind of brick your modules if you don't remember some of this information. Um, but one thing I want to touch on here is network ID. And this is kind of a big one. Um, network ID, by default, we ship all devices with the default network ID of 7FFF. And whenever the sensors and the gateways or modems or IoT edge computers, whenever they're in run mode, uh, they are operating on the network ID of 7FFF. Now, whenever you change your sensor uh, into configuration mode, you know, by pressing the buttons on it to force it into configuration mode, the most important thing that changes is that the network ID of that sensor changes to 7BCD, okay? So as soon as that sensor is put into configuration mode, the only way you're gonna get data from that sensor again is if your modem or your gateway or your IoT edge computer is has its network ID set to 7BCD. Um, if you use our uh, node red library like NCD Red Wireless or use our alpha station software, you'll know that it's possible to configure devices. And we're actually taking care of changing that network ID for you in the background. So whenever you tell the uh, USB modem or the IoT Edge computer to go into configuration mode, this is the biggest thing that we do is we change the network ID to 7BCD. Uh, and that allows us to start receiving data from those sensors. And since we're in configuration mode and we're receiving data from the sensors, we'll know that those sensors are configuration mode and we can display them to you as such. So that's one thing that you're gonna be playing around with in um, XCTU is we're gonna be changing uh, the network ID.
Um, I'm gonna go ahead and change this back to 7FFF. And remember these changes don't apply until you click the little right pencil. So right now I have the USB modem connected to my computer and I also have a second USB modem just powered up and the idea is that that second USB modem is going to be a repeater uh, for, for this use case. So what I want to do is I want to find that modem. So what I can do is I can click on this little, uh, this little web icon here. Um, looks like a bunch of circles connected. And basically what we're doing here is we're scanning for devices in the area. And I'm looking for this USB modem to show up in the list. And we see it does show up there and I can confirm by its address here ending in 7B43 that that is in fact my USB modem. So that is the device I was looking to find. So I'm going to say add selected devices. And there it is. So now I've got my USB modem that's connected to my computer and I've got this what we'll call a router uh, powered up as well. So I can actually click on this router and you'll see we can remotely change settings in that, in that remote device. So we can change settings in the remote routers and we can change them in the sensors as well uh, remotely if needed. We've got the, the USB modem has shown up here and uh, now we've clicked on it, so now we can configure its settings. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change its network ID to 7BCD, okay? And then we're gonna click on write. All right, and then we'll go ahead and uh, we'll just remove that from the list just to kind of show you what's going on here. So now if I go ahead and I scan for devices again, <coughs> I can sit here all day and nothing's ever going to show up. And that's because I changed the, uh, the network ID of, of that modem um, to 7BCD. And until I change my USB modem that's connected to my computer to the same thing, it's not gonna show up. So we're gonna go ahead and click on stop. Okay, cancel. And we're gonna click on our USB modem. And now I'm going to change my network ID to 7BCD. And we'll write that. And then we will um, scan for devices again. And we'll see that after we did that, it'll show up. And there it is. Okay, so we'll go ahead and uh, it's there. So we'll just click on add selected device. Um, you don't have to add selected device. Uh, really, you only need to do that if you're actually changing settings in it. Um, but there it is. So now we're gonna drag out a different diagnostic tool here. We're actually going to uh, uh, click on this little icon up here in the upper right hand corner. And this is gonna let us see sort of the web of our network. So first thing that's gonna pop up, of course, is gonna be my USB modem. Um, and then here in a second, we should see that second USB modem show up. Uh, which in our case, we're gonna be using as a router. And there it is. So it shows up and then here after a few seconds, uh, this line's going to change colors and it's going to let us know um, more information about the connection between the two devices. There we go. So we'll see that the, uh, the line changed to have an arrow connection on both ends. Uh, and that just basically indicates that the devices have exchanged both directions at this point. Um, so we can tell uh, that the signal quality in both directions is 42 dBm. So whenever this module transmits over here, that's 42 dBm. Whenever this module transfers over here, that's 42 dBm. Um, so we've got information about both directions of communication. And sometimes they can be different depending on the installation. Now, what I've done here is I actually have the antenna disconnected from the USB modem connected to my computer. And I also have the, the antenna disconnected from my sensor. Um, and then on my, my second USB modem that's acting as the router, this module here, I have the antenna connected. So that's gonna allow that this module to communicate with the sensor and communicate with my modem but my modem's actually not going to be able to communicate with the sensor directly because neither one of them have an antenna. So 
both of my modules now, remember, are in 7BCD as a network ID, which is the network ID that the sensors use whenever they're in configuration mode. You're going to see that the sensor doesn't show up here, and the sensor, if both of these modules were at 7FFF, you're never going to see the uh, sensors show up in this network because the sensors wake up, they send their telemetry, and they go back to sleep. So that doesn't allow XCTU any time to communicate with that module to get information about the connection. So the only way that we can actually analyze sensors on site is to put those sensors into configuration mode and then have our modem and our routers all in configuration uh, mode as well, which basically setting the network ID to 7BCD. So now I'm gonna go ahead and put my sensor into configuration mode. Um, by pressing the reset button and then holding the config button for approximately eight-ish seconds, 10 seconds. Okay. And then we'll just wait for uh, that sensor to show up on our, our map. Okay, and there you go. We got uh, our sensor uh, showed up on the map. Um, and we're seeing that we have communication from the router to the sensor is uh, 62 dBm. And the other direction we don't know about yet because it's still gathering information about that direction. And if we, uh, if we hover over this, we can see that the uh, communication from the router module to the other module 62 and the other direction uh, is unknown at this point because we haven't collected that data. Okay, so now it's populated and you'll see uh, we do actually have a slight discrepancy in, in the communication in both directions. And this is going to be because whenever this module is transmitting, it has an antenna connected. This module does not. So whenever this module transmits over here, um, we're getting a weaker connection than whenever this module connects over here. Now in a real installation, you're going to have antennas installed on everything. This is really just for to be able to show you this on my desk in a simple way. But this gives you a lot of information. You can actually see, you know, okay, this is my modem module. This is the uh, mo module that's acting as a router, and this is the sensor module. I can see that the connection between my modem and the router is this, and I can see the connection between the router and the sensor is this. So I've got better connection from the modem to my router than I do from my router to my sensor. And that actually makes perfect sense because I have the modem is in the center of my desk right now. The sensor is off to my left and the router is off to my right. So the router is closer to the modem than it is to the sensor, which is showing this discrepancy in wireless communication. And I'm extrapolating this or, or exponentializing this because I don't have the antennas installed. If I had antennas installed on all these, everything's going to show up as a negative 40 dB and everything's just flawless. Um, but this is a this is a good way, you know, whenever you're learning about these devices on your desk, which is where I recommend you learn. Don't try to learn in the field in a big installation. Get these things on your desk and experiment with this XTU software and learn how it works. So this is good information. This is, whenever you're in the field, this is gonna tell you a whole lot about what's going on. And you can walk around with that USB modem connected to your laptop. And the USB modem can be powered off of your laptop. So you got the USB modem in your laptop in your hands and you can walk around to different spots and see, oh, okay, I have a better connection to a sens this sensor right here. Maybe I need to install a, a, a router right here because I can see, you know, if, if I were on site, I could go, you know, between us, let's say a sensor wasn't reporting to the modem. I could go to different points in between them and I could see, okay, I have connection to the sensor here, but my connection to the modem is weak. So I'm gonna move over here. Okay, still have good connection to the modem or to the sensor. I also have good connection to the modem now. So yes, I'm gonna install my router in this location. So this is, this is really, really, really valuable information to have whenever you're doing on-site diagnostics. Now, these readings, negative 42 dBm, 
um, this this is a way of, of measuring signal strength for, for wireless connections. Um, and basically, anything below negative 70 is, is good. Uh, anything above 90 is very bad. In fact, I don't think I've ever seen 90. I think 88 is about the worst I've seen. Um, but this is just one one tool in an XCTU's belt is being able to see that connection, but it's a huge tool. This is probably what you're gonna be using the most. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop this network scan and uh, we're gonna take a look at some other tools here. So the next one I wanna look at is gonna be a range test. Um, so I can select my, my modem module here and I can select, uh, you know, say my router module here and then uh, I can start a range test. And, you know, instead of seeing it in 42 dBm, you actually see bars here. 100% um, full bar is going to be, you know, negative 40 or below. So, you know, let's let's go ahead. I'm going to, I'm just going to screw an antenna onto my modem here. Okay. So I've got the uh, the antenna screwed onto my modem and to that router module, and I'm seeing negative 40. And as far as I'm concerned, negative 40 dBm is a flawless 100% perfect connection, even though this last bar never lights up. I don't really know what you have to do to light that bar up, but negative 40 is a perfect connection. Um, so you'll see if I take the, the antenna back off my modem, we'll start to see the, the dBm uh, go up a little bit, which the higher this number is, the worse. Um, and since it's negative, I guess it's actually the lower or the worse. But anyway, uh, we'll go ahead and stop on that. Um, so this is another thing that you can do to gather more information on site. Um, the last thing that I want to touch on here is spectrum analysis. Um, so we can actually see, you know, if there's a lot of noise in the area. So I can click on my modem module here and I can start a spectrum analysis. And I'm in my office and there aren't a whole lot of high power devices in the 900 megahertz frequency band, you know, but you, you may be on a site, you know, where they maybe have a lot of high power CB radios. Uh, maybe there's a cell phone tower in the area that's, that's in the same frequency area. This is actually gonna show you the different channels uh, that the wireless module operates on and what kind of noise it's seeing in those areas. So, you know, I'll see, you know, pretty much everything here um, is about is about in the in the upper 90s, uh, which is basically perfect. That means that there's almost no traffic in those in those areas. Um, but if you see some fluctuations here, you know, you're looking at this bar graph and say, oh, well, what is what is that? You know, I can click on it. And I can look at just channel 24 and I can see, you know, how much noise is in that area. So this is where, you know, if you did see a lot of noise on some particular channels, you know, you can, um, you can use that channel mask parameter back under our settings to isolate the channels that you're using. And this is a multi multi-byte uh, value um, that allows you to mask which channels you do and do not want to use. Um, so I think that kind of wraps it up here. Um, I think that's a pretty good, you know, without getting too deep, um, this is what you can do. And of course, you know, as soon as we're all done here, I want to make sure that I put everything back into run mode. So I'm going to go back in. First thing, I'm going to change my router uh, network ID because if I change my modem then I can't communicate with my router anymore. Make sense? So I want to change this first. Oops. And uh, write that. Now I'll go back to my USB modem and now I'll change that. So you want to do it in the correct order here. Okay. And then uh, That's it, and we can put our sensor back into run mode. Like I said though, if the sensor's in run mode, it's never going to show up here. You gotta put your modem 
any routers you're using, and the sensor all into that configuration mode, and then they'll show up here because the sensor has to be in configuration mode, which means that in configuration mode, the sensor stays powered up. The line never goes dead. Um, one last thing, and this is particularly for John, um, you wanted to know about uh, changing the sleep parameters in your sensor modules. Um, so I actually screwed up here. Let's. Uh, I need to rediscover the router module. We need to go back into configuration mode, basically, is what I'm getting at here. Okay, we're gonna look at changing settings in a wireless sensor. Okay, so we've got our modem and our router. They're both got their network IDs set to 7BCD. So now we should be able to see devices in configuration mode. Um, so we're gonna scan for wireless devices again. Okay, so apologies, um, the sensor that I actually had uh, reporting in uh, had its sleep mode disabled, so it wasn't a good test. Um, this 3166 module here, however, um, let's click on it and take a look at its settings uh, just to see what's different between a modem module and a sensor module. <clears throat> And we'll see it's currently network ID is 7BCD, which that's actually being set by the sensor itself uh, after it went into configuration mode. But if we scroll down, we'll see the baud rate on the sensors is actually 9600. Um, and that is different on the modems and the router modules. The modems and router modules are going to be 115200 is going to be their baud rate. Um, the other key difference of a battery powered sensor is going to be its sleep mode. So we'll see right here, the sleep mode is currently set to async pin sleep one. Basically that allows our processor on the sensor to put the XB module to sleep and wake it up. And that allows it to run off of batteries because if the, sense, if the wireless module's awake all the time, it's gonna kill those batteries really fast. But if you purchased your sensor with an external power supply, then it's possible to keep your sensor module awake at all times, which allows it to act as a repeater for your network. So if you change uh, this from one to normal, then that's going to tell um, the XB module, hey, just stay awake all the time. I want you to act as a repeater. Um, so so that's, that's a very useful piece of information to have. Just keep in mind, if this is a battery-powered sensor and you set that to normal, you're going to kill those batteries. So only do this if your sensor is externally powered. But that will allow you to do that. So I hope this, uh, this video was informative. Uh, I hope it at least gets you started on your journey to learning more about Digimesh and how to uh, do field diagnostics of these wireless devices in the field. Um, let us know if you have any questions, and we'll be happy to answer them and possibly create follow-up videos based on what you need. Thank you for watching, and have a great day.